Why do we need to talk about the Cloud Boom Echo 3? Well, in my humble opinion, On Running has three flagship shoes. The Cloud Monster, which I absolutely love. The Cloud Surfer 7, which has redefined what comfort feels like for On Running. And now the fast race day shoe, the Cloud Boom Echo 3. Let's talk about it. Okay, okay, okay. So welcome to the channel. For those of you that watch it, it's not a filter. I've actually had a haircut. <laughs> welcome to the channel, Aubrey Running. And on Instagram, Aubrey.Running. Please do give me a follow over there, let's connect. As at the time of recording this, you've given me 3,717 subscribers. I'm deeply, deeply appreciative of that. Thank you very much. Let's start talking about the Cloud Boom Echo 3 with the three things we always need to know about about every single shoe, starting with the price. Okay, so when the shoe launches eventually on the 6th of July, 2023, it launches at 260 pounds or $290 or 300 euros. Next up, being a race day fast shoe, it needs to be on the lighter side. So let's talk about the weight. I wear a size nine and a half UK and it weighed in at 232 grams or 8.1 ounces, if that's the kind of unit you prefer. And then thirdly, the stack height and the drop. This part is interesting. It's 37 mil at the back, 27 and a half at the front, being a 9.5 millimeter drop. But it doesn't feel like it. It feels a bit more flatter. It feels a bit more closer to the ground than that. I don't know how they've done that wizardry. I like the feeling of wearing this because it feels normal, like a normal shoe does. Aubrey, where does this shoe fit in someone's rotation? What is this shoe for? This is a neutral race day shoe or a shoe that you can use on your speed sessions, intervals, reps, that kind of thing. This would be a very good companion. In terms of its fit, true to size, I've got no complaint whatsoever. Okay, so for those of you new to the channel, I pride myself in keeping things simple, reviewing a shoe in detail, but in everyday language, no jargon that no one understands, that's what I want to do here. So we're going to have a chat about the shoe, starting from the top and working our way down. Let's start with the heel. Truthfully, there isn't a lot to report here. On running, I've gone with a very minimalistic heel. The heel on the inside of it does have some padding in it, but you know what? It, it secures your foot very well. I've got no complaints. I did have some heel slips with some fast day shoes, no need to mention any, where I've had to then tie in with that runner's knot. Never had to do this here. It's very easy to get a secure lockdown. No complaints. I love this next bit. It's the tongue. Let's talk about the tongue. I love it. Apart from shoes that simply just have a joined sock as an upper, this tongue is the best gusseting action I've seen in a long time. Additionally, it is thin, but padded. It is very well engineered, but perforations bring in that breathability. In addition to that, the tongue has a loop that the laces run through. So gusseted and has a loop. Come on, come on. What else do you need from a tongue? Come on. One thing that a lot of people don't dwell on is the lacing system. This part is key. So let's talk about it. The lacing system. Look, look, I always say this in all of the reviews. It's simple. Put holes in the upper, reinforce those holes that when someone's trying to tie up the laces ready for the run, it doesn't look like the shoe will come apart. That's exactly what they've done. In addition though, they've added some silicone to the laces that when you tie them and you're ready to go for your run, you're not gonna have to stop to start tying your laces again. It secures that tie, that knot. And I actually like that. It's a very thin profile lace, which is always great. The only laces I've seen being better than this are the laces on the Vaporfly or Alpha Fly, you know, with the rib dots. But that's what they've done here with a minimalistic look to the laces. Well done. Possibly one of the most unique features about the shoe is the upper. Let's go into detail about the upper of the Cloud Boom Echo 3. When talking about the upper of any running shoe, I always talk about two things, the technical performance as well as aesthetics. What On Running has managed to do in all of their shoes across the years is the look. They've established an On Running look, which I deeply love. They've delivered that on here, but better. 
So, it is a one-piece upper. Yes, they've got some details coming across, but it's a microfiber, very breathable and perforated upper, very lightweight. I do love the look of it. I do love that. In terms of the performance, I like to address two things. Is it breathable? And does it do a good job of securing your foot at all areas of the shoe? So let's start with the toe box. My concern here is this shoe will not be for the wide footed runner. It looks very narrow. Um, it fits me very well because I suit on running shoes that way. But if you've got a wide foot, I wonder how you will fare with this shoe. That is a concern. The second thing I want to talk about, which is a plus, the breathability. It's summer in the UK and I'm feeling the heat. But you know what? In my runs that I've done, some of the speed work I've been doing, it's felt really, really good. The perforations that you can see on the upper allows it to breathe very well. Oh no, what's happened to the clouds? What happened to that cloud poddy structure on running always does? They've lost that and we're happy about it. We're happy about it. Let's talk about that midsole. Now this part I'm excited about because on running has moved away from the usual cloud structure we see. And you know what? I'm happy about it. Four things I need to tell you about. If you look in the inside of the shoe, that black logo you are seeing there is a stickier rubber that when your sock attaches to it, it doesn't slip about. That's just added advantage in securing your foot during the run. It's a silicone material, nice touch. Very simple, but nice touch. Let's actually turn attention to the midsole. Three different elements, the usual cloud tech foam that you're used to from on running, a full length carbon speed board that runs the full width of the shoe, and then this Helion Hyper Foam. Now, me, I don't care for techie names. Anyone can call anything, any name. All you need to know is, you've got a very plush cushioning, a firmer cushioning, and a speed board. What that speed board is doing, giving you a return of energy, but I also mentioned about how narrow this shoe looks and feels. That speed board does a good job of stabilizing your run, stabilizing so you don't worry about ankle turns, over pronation, supinate, whatever you want to call it. It adds a lot of stability to your run. Turn the shoe over. Let's talk about the outsole. How does the outsole of the Cloud Boom Echo 3 perform? Now, there is something we need to talk about here. I know this will sound funny, but on other on-running shoes, these bad boys collect the whole neighborhood stones. If you ever want to start a stone collection, put on on-running shoes, the previous ones, and these bad boys will give you all the stones in your neighborhood. They've done away with that and given us a something a bit more slicker. That is much, much better. Surprisingly, I haven't picked up any stones just yet. All my neighbors still have all their pebbles in the gardens, which works great. <laughs> On a serious note though, the black parts you see are intentionally placed resilient rubbers in key landing zones to avoid this bad boy wearing out quick. I like the fact that they've placed the full coverage at the front there. That's going to help you with high traction on toe off. Well done. As I mentioned before, I'm nearly at 4,000 subscribers. Please do support me, subscribe to the channel. It would help me out a lot. As I'm trying to grow the channel, I've got a lot of plans for it. So do consider subscribing. Aubrey, from watching the review, it sounds like you like everything about the shoe. I like most things. There are two things that I think could have been done better. One, the price. 260 pounds is a lot of money, especially in today's climate. Just my opinion. Secondly, it's a very narrow shoe. It works perfect for me. It'll work perfect for other runners. But if you are someone that wears wide fitting shoes, I suspect and predict you might have some toe box issues. You might have the upper squeezing in a bit tight. You may have to size up. Okay, so I've actually done an earlier first impressions review of this shoe. I'll put that here. And when a shoe ticks all of my boxes, I do what I call a spotlight. I went all the way to Cape Town to film this. You can watch it here. That's me on Table Mountain talking about the shoe. You definitely have to check it out.